again, you shall know the truth, and the truth shall set you free. Amen? Let's bow our heads. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Hallelujah. Father, we just thank you right now. We honor you for your presence. In your presence is fullness of joy and life forevermore. And God, we stand before you right now. And we say right now, God, Howard steps back. Holy Spirit, you come forward. I thank you for the blood of Jesus that cleanses me and everyone from all sin. Thank you, God. Father, we pray that you just speak to our hearts right now. Holy Spirit, you have a way of speaking to each and every person individually, but yet corporately. Do that for us today. And we'll give you the honor, the glory, and the praise in Jesus' name. In Jesus' name. Come on, church. In Jesus' name. Amen and amen. I want to talk to you today about facing and defeating the giants in your life. Facing and defeating the giants in your life. I want you to turn to your neighbor. Come on, turn to your neighbor. Come on, you, this is good. You get some FaceTime. Not Facebook, but FaceTime. Amen? Not Instagram, but some Insta FaceTime. Amen? I don't know just because you on a computer don't mean you're actually touching anybody. Amen? But we got something, something about human touch. It's something about affirming one another in the word of God face to face. And that's that disconnect that's happening in our society where we don't know what to do. So, Leon, I'm going to look at you. Is that all right? My second born. Is that all right, Leon? Is that all right? Amen. Are y'all ready? Say, neighbor, neighbor. you look good today. I mean, you really look marvelous. But I want to know, are you facing and defeating your giants? Say, neighbor, God has given you the victory. He has called you to overcome every problem issue giant in your life. Amen. 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 Give God a hand clap for that. Amen. I just want to make sure you're listening. Amen. Your call is to face your giants. Not run away from it like the children. How many did their homework? First Kings chapter 17. First Samuel chapter 17. Amen. Everybody start looking down. Amen. Hallelujah. Glory to God. Okay, the guys in my men's group, y'all said we, we read it today, right? Remember that? Raise your hand so it won't look like, amen, we did our homework, amen? First Samuel chapter 17. I want to encourage you to read the story of David and Goliath and, and, and the battle. How I many of that was a real battle? This is not a fictitious story, amen? And there were some spiritual truths that we got out of that body, battle. One is that we have to face and defeat our giants in life. And we understand that you can overcome all of your situations by just yielding to Christ. How many know that's true? God is trying to get a yield out of you. Amen. He's trying to get you up to a point of surrender. Amen. And every point of desperation is a new point of dedication to the Lord. Amen. How many know we all have giants? Got a couple of giants on, 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 on the board. Amen. Tell me if I missed it. Amen. How many know we all got? I don't care how good you look. I don't know how pretty, how care how pretty you look. I don't care, boy. Some of you got to sw- switch to the side. Other you got to switch to this side. Other you- How many know you all got giants? Some of you got to part down the side, by down the middle, amen. Some of you looking all pretty today, but how many know you, when you leave here, you're going to have some giants that you're going to have to face? Amen. <laughs> Hallelujah. It's not just everybody. Every past, every leader, amen. They're going to have certain tests that they're going to be, be faced with. And you got to learn how to defeat the giants that plague your life. Amen. And we named a few of them. Some, some giants are addictions. I mean, alcohol addiction. How many had that run in their family? I know I do. Amen. I had to overcome that. Amen. Preachers, but all getting drunk. God save them. Three generations said it had to stop here in the name of Jesus. Did he, did he hear me, church? I didn't say, well, I just might as well give up because we all alcoholics. You know, we can hold it real good. No. Devil. Cross this line. Y'all remember that growing up? 
Huh, y'all remember that? Remember the, the battery commercial where you put the, am I that old? You put it on your shoulder, and if you get mad, you'd be like, I dare you to knock this off my shoulder. Just knock it off. Some of y'all got to get bold with the devil that way. Devil, I dare you to try to come near my house. What you going to give him? You going to give him some of you? No, I rebuke you in the name of Jesus. See, you trying to give him you, you're going to get knocked out every time. Amen? You're going to be like Paul, I know. Pastor Howard, I know, but who are you? But you say in the name of Jesus. Guess what? That devil got to back off. Amen? Say like alcohol, illicit drugs. I mean, no, uh, we, 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 we're, we got things called recreational drugs now. Church folk using recreational drugs. Get a little. Yeah, everybody got glaucoma now. Everybody need a medical prescription. Meth, plaguing, that's all in the sub. These are suburban drugs right now. People are functioning with recreational drugs. Ministers and leaders are being caught with these drugs because we're not facing the giants in our lives. Are you with me? How many of you can come to church and hide out? Did, did you hear me? I might see, see, when the church gets right, that's when the world will get right. The Bible says judgment begins where? Thank you, honey. Where? In the house of God. So when God cleans up his church, then, then God will use his church to perfect the world. The Bible says we're the salt and the light. So pray for God's church. Amen? Sex. Adultery. Fornication. Illicit sex. Used to be a time when you had a pastor's title, it stood for something. How many know it still does? Yeah. Right. Amen. Amen. Thank you, honey. <laughs> Thank you, chair. Amen, chair, light bulb, floor. But it's the truth anyhow. Bishop meant something. Now everybody wants to be a bishop, but nobody wants to have the holiness of a bishop. I hear stories about one of the founders of the Church of God in Christ, Bishop Mason, and how he walked in such a, a severe level of holiness that many times when his ministers under him were having problems, they would call him in and want him to take sides, and he'd just start praying. And after the time he finished praying, people would be weeping, and they would be making up. Not because he tried to counsel them, not because he tried to talk, because he prayed to God. And the holiness of God, as, as my brother Darrell was trying to explain with as many eloquent words as he can, but the holiness of God, which is the Shekinah glory of God, that's what came in last week when we were worshiping God, the Shekinah glory of God. He comes in and he disrupts and he destroys all our format so that he can minister to us the way we need to be ministered to. Amen? Amen. Hallelujah. Sexual addiction, pornography. I mean, pornography is running rampant in the church right now. It's a real battle. Now you can get this stuff right in your homes. And it, every person has been touched by it in some way. Are y'all with me? Emails. You know, I want to talk to you. Like, Who is this girl? I want to talk to you. Well, you know me. I'd be like, honey, come see this. Are you with me? Things coming right at you. You can get your, your, your little thrill on and nobody got to know about it. And you still can come to church and act holy. Perversion at an all-time high. Well, that's all right. You know, I am a man. Or, you know, I don't know well. I mean, the holiness is still works. Amen? Amen. Holiness still works. Amen? And anytime you're watching pornography and these things, they objectify the opposite sex. And they become an object. And it interferes with having pure relationship with your spouse and with others. Are y'all with me? And if the enemy, see what the enemy's trying to do, he's trying to get you at a younger age now. Because he can get you in this mess now. And guess what? He can, he can, he can destroy your legacy. So you got to get free. The only way you break a stronghold is by exposing it. Amen? 
See, see, you got to go expose that to your spouse and say, baby, you know what? I'm struggling with this today. Oh, this came in. This came on. Are y'all with me? And embarrass your flesh. And then you got to go to fasting and prayer. The Bible says some spirits are broken by fast. And if you know lust and perversion runs in your family, amen. That, that's a generational curse that's in your lineage. Guess what? You got to dig in deep and expose that demon so that you can walk in holiness. Amen. They say anywhere from six to seven out of ten pastors struggle with pornography. Now, those are the ones that admitted it. Now, if, the, if, the, if our leaders are there, where's our church? See, pastor got to have some accountability partners. Are you with me? So I can walk in purity. Because that touches everybody. Are y'all with me? Food. Some of us are addicted to food. Every time we have a rough time, we got to, oh boy, we got to go eat. You know, church folk, we love to eat. Got a good word? We don't want to meditate and just get that word on the side. We want to go eat and forget about that good word. Amen. It's getting quiet in this Presbyterian church. Amen. 